arriving with a set of figures that would be extraordinary anywhere else, but have become business as usual in WA. Our operating surplus is up from 3.3 billion at the time of the state budget to 3.7 billion. Total revenue grew by $2.2 billion, courtesy of taxes and higher royalties, with demand for iron ore still strong. But at the same time, income from lithium dropped by 80% or $550 million on predictions. Even still, some were expecting surplus records to be broken. But the Treasurer points to $2.2 billion in debt paid off and expenses rising by $1.8 billion, with cost increases on projects, including another $700 million blowout on Metronet. $2.8 billion provisioned for the new public sector wages policy and Watercorp also retaining $2.8 billion in dividends to support building a new desalination plant in Elkimos. So we've got a new Premier, a new Treasurer, but the same old process of hiding the massive surpluses going forward. Having a strong operating surplus means that you can fund infrastructure that services future generations without burdening future generations with unsustainable debt levels. When we have people in Western Australia who can't put food on the table, can't secure their accommodation, can't pay their car registration, can't fill prescriptions, it's not the time to be saving for future generations. WA's peak welfare organisation says the number of families in need is up more than 50% on the previous year. We live in an extremely wealthy state that's outstripping all the other states and the majority of West Australians really are doing well. But there is an increasing growing number of those who are falling below the poverty line. We're continuing to do what we can to support households. Rita Safiotti points to power bill credits, free and reduced public transport fares and efforts to bring on new housing supply and says strong economic growth, which is predicted to be higher at 4.5%, is vital to ensuring Western Australians have good jobs. James Carmody, ABC News.